Coming up next, active duty troops are deployed to our border as more migrants try to seek asylum in the U.S. with Title 42 set to expire. The 27-year-old who died from heat exhaustion while hiking here at the El Capitan Preserve in Lakeside has been identified. In Northern California, a third stabbing attack rattles nerves and puts people on alert in Davis. And when a dog gets passed over at the animal shelter, sometimes they just need a new look. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. The Biden administration is sending 1,500 more troops to the southern border to help with an expected surge of migrants when Title 42 expires next week. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan, in for Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Today at the border, just west of San Isidro, hundreds of migrants lined up. You see these lines waiting to claim asylum. CBS 8's David Godfordson spoke to people right through the border wall who said they have been waiting for days with little food to keep them going. This was what it looked like this morning along the border just west of San Ysidro. Hundreds of migrants waiting in line to be allowed into the United States to claim asylum. People from all over the world exhausted from their long journeys lying on the ground just a few feet from the border. Border Patrol agents are providing water, but these migrants from the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa told me they haven't eaten in days. It has been five days now, we don't, we don't eat, man. They don't want their faces shown on television for fear it might hurt their chances to get into the United States. Well, we got no problem here because we are more than 100 people here. No one is eating, man. And we are men, we have to eat something so that we can be the patient. Title 42, which allowed U.S. agents to turn away asylum seekers at the border due to the pandemic, is set to expire next week. But because of the large numbers of migrants already lining up at the border, Customs and Border Protection has already started loading people into buses and transporting them to Border Patrol stations to be processed. I followed this bus to the Imperial Beach Border Patrol station, where I could see dozens of people waving at me from inside the bus. Once they arrive, they will undergo credible fear interviews to determine if they qualify for asylum hearings because of persecution or fear of harm in their home countries. Mucho conflicto armado. Conflicto armado, mucha violencia. We need to be received uh, by the U.S. because we come from uh, troubled places. So there's a lot of violence. Photojournalist Jay Erdman is helping translate for this group of men from Colombia who said they flew from Bogota to Mexico City and then took a bus to the Tijuana border. They say Border Patrol agents are allowing women and children to cross into the U.S., but not men. La, la border so Border Patrol told us this morning to line up here and wait, and we've been here for some hours, but nothing's happened. They can't fit us in the shelters right now, so we have to wait. Customs and Border Protection sent us a statement they are using all available resources to handle this surge of migrants at the border. They also said criminal background checks are done on everybody who is taken into custody for processing. Just west of San Ysidro at the international border, David Gottfriedson, CBS 8. All right, David, thank you. The County Board of Supervisors decided today there will be a special election to fill Nathan Fletcher's seat. Fletcher is set to resign from his seat on May 15th following allegations of sexual misconduct. The board's decision came after hours of public comment today. Supervisors had the option of appointing a person to fill the seat or hold a special election. We spoke with Chairwoman Nora Vargas about representation in District 4 until the election. It's really important to emphasize that the staff of District 4 continue to come in here and work every day. They are doing the work. The special election is set for August 15th and could cost close to $5 million. If a candidate does not receive more than 50% of the vote, there would be a runoff election between the two top contenders, and that wouldn't happen until November. A man arrested in a cold case killing from nearly 30 years ago has pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter. 59-year-old Jesus Jesse Velasquez Ayala will face 12 years in state prison when he is sentenced later this month. He was arrested last year for stabbing 54-year-old Dolores Rabaya to death in her home in Oceanside. Her body was found on New Year's Day back in 1994. 
Police say Ayala and Rabaya had been seen together the night before, celebrating New Year's Eve at a bar on the South Coast Highway. The case was reopened in 2015. A re-examination of forensic evidence is what led to Ayala's arrest. Two of California's indigenous tribes are declaring a state of emergency because of missing and murdered tribal members. As CBS 8's political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, lawmakers are focusing on what more the state needs to do to help the tribes. One of the bills everyone spoke about today is AB 44, which would give Native American tribes access to law enforcement databases because right now they say there's a lack of communication and sometimes confusion over who investigates murders and missing people on Native American land. This is Emily Renee Risling. She has not been seen since October 14th, 2021. As a result of Emily's disappearance and other cases of violence, including suspected attempts at trafficking, Yurok Chairman Joe James and his council declared a state of emergency. The Round Valley Indian tribes declared a state of emergency in April after two members were found murdered. Homicide is the leading cause of death for indigenous women between ages 15 and 24. Assemblymember James Ramos is the chair of the Legislative Native American Caucus. He's working with tribe leaders to combat the crisis. Provide parity between our tribal police and California law enforcement. Chairperson Janet K. Bill of the Chukchansi Indian says more funding is key too. Prevention and intervention initiatives that protect our most vulnerable from the predators who prey on their vulnerabilities. Democrats and Republicans say they are listening. As a former prosecutor, I was a little embarrassed that I was unaware of it and the staggering statistics of violence plaguing the Native American people. I come here as a listener but I also come as a fighter. And one thing that I've heard today was that there's been a lot of pain and suffering, and that ends today. Today marks the first of several events this week at the Capitol to honor the missing and murdered indigenous people. Starting tonight, the Capitol will be lit up in red, and tomorrow there will be a vigil on the steps. Thanks, Morgan. Tonight, we know the name of a 27-year-old man who died on the El Capitan hiking trail. Friends of Sergio de Jesus Santiago Sufi called for help on Sunday, but it was too late before an emergency helicopter could get there. CBS 8's Brian White is in Lakeside at the El Capitan trailhead with how experts say you can stay safe. <clears throat> Yeah, Marcella Jesse, apparently Sergio told his friends he wasn't feeling well, possibly suffering from heat exhaustion. Now I talked with a number of hikers out here today about what they do to prepare for a trail like this one. This was the scene Sunday evening at the bottom of the El Capitan trailhead. You can see sheriff's deputies on scene investigating the death of 27 year old Sergio de Jesus Santiago Sufi, whose friends called for help around 630 in the evening. The first thought is sadness for the hiker and the family um, because a loss like that, particularly at that age, is, is really difficult. Right now, an official cause of death has not been determined, but Sergio is said to have been showing signs of heat exhaustion. It happens a lot. I mean, you've got, um, I used to live in Arizona and Camelback would have a couple fatalities a year. Mike Baker is a runner and says he's made some mistakes out here at El Capitan before. When I did this the first time, I did not bring enough water and felt it. And so, uh, yeah, being prepared matters. Today, he's running up to the top, and he's not going to make that same mistake again. I'm going to be out for three hours, two and a half hours. Uh, I have way more than enough water that I need. Got some sunscreen. Uh, those are the important things. And Debbie Abruzzo from Lakeside has been hiking this trail for two years. She shared some helpful tips. It's also nice to have kind of a wet, a rag. Sometimes we even freeze it and put it around our necks and that helps also. Before Mike Duhigg hopped on his mountain bike for a ride on the trail, he put on plenty of sunscreen and drink water too. I tend to run a little dehydrated, uh, but I always carry water and um, usually try to ride with someone else. Carrying extra water doesn't cost you very much and it may end up saving your life. David Lipsitz runs the San Diego Hiking Society Facebook page and he shared what he calls the 10 essentials. Navigation, some some form of light protection from the sun you want to have something to take care of first aid having a knife or a multi-tool um, being able to create or start a fire shelter is a good idea then extra food extra water extra clothes 
Now, you guys, another interesting thing David mentioned was how younger people sometimes don't recognize the signs of heat exhaustion early enough and may not know when to quit. So it's important to know that this type of thing can happen to anyone at any age. And Brian, you know, this hiker you mentioned it was only 27 years old. He was hiking with his friends on an overcast day. Are there signs to look out for to tell people that you are suffering from heat exhaustion or dehydration? Yeah, if you're feeling weak, dizzy, uh, nauseous, uh, having any types of headaches, uh, feeling very thirsty, these are the signs to look out for. And if you're feeling that way, you may want to seek out some shade and try to cool down any way you can until help can arrive. Yeah, don't try to finish the hike and make sure you always hike with a buddy. Uh, such a sad case. I, don't, we, I know we don't know the official cause of death, but definitely a reminder for all of us to be prepared. Thanks for sharing that with us, Brian. Still ahead tonight, the pill experts say could help with binge drinking. Plus, Hollywood writers walk the picket line for the first time in 15 years. What it all means for your favorite shows. And up next, police investigate a third stabbing attack near UC Davis.